An Empty Sky, How to Be a Witness on Earth. When I was in fourth grade, I thought I was so lucky to get picked to visit my school's computer lab once a week to learn how to code. When I was in fifth grade, I was excited to move into a brand new portable classroom that had air conditioning and clean carpet and out of the old dirty looking classrooms with cracked tile and windows. When I was in sixth grade though, my family moved to another city where the houses were big and beautiful, surrounded by large yards where tall trees lined the streets. It seemed like another planet far, far away from the neighborhood I left where houses were small, identical, and built by the government where there were no trees to shade my walk to school along the burning concrete. But the biggest shock was when I started at my new school. I discovered that there were no portables, that all the classrooms had air conditioning and sparkling counters, floors, and windows. All the kids got to use not only the computer lab, but the science lab and the theater too. At my new school, my classmates either brought their own fancy looking lunches or they purchased pizza or burritos from a snack bar. At my old school, nearly everyone I knew got free or reduced price lunches from the cafeteria. By the time I got to high school and had attended school celebrations where cash and prizes were handed out by the parent club to students with the best grades, as wonderful as that was, I realized something was not right. It wasn't luck in fourth grade or fifth grade. It wasn't even luck that I moved to this amazing new school that had some of the best teachers I have ever had. I realized that the difference between the education in the two cities I lived in had nothing to do with luck and everything to do with the amount of money and the color of skin of the students in each place. Once I saw these facts, these inequalities, I could not unsee them, and I started to take steps on my own path to work towards ending educational inequality. What is something that you have seen that you can't unsee? Something unfair, something that makes you mad or sad, something inspirational even, something that moves you to action. After Jesus had been killed, but then emerged alive from the tomb, he spent the next 40 days appearing to the disciples, reminding them what he had taught them about how to love well and bring the kingdom of God to earth. One last time, Jesus appeared to a gathering of his followers. They asked him, So when are you going to get started bringing this kingdom of God you've been talking about to Israel? Isn't it time? Jesus replied, Don't you worry about timing. That's God's business. Your job here is to receive the Holy Spirit and to be my witness not only here in Jerusalem, but to the ends of the earth. As soon as he said this, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of sight. While he was going and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Hey, why are you just standing there looking up at an empty sky? You just saw Jesus go. He'll come back as mysteriously as he left. There is nothing to wonder about. Kids, I know you have amazing imaginations, but sometimes there is nothing to wonder about. Sometimes, once you've seen something or been a witness, as the scripture says, you can't unsee it. And the Bible tells us not to just stand there. Imagine you're riding the bus or at a playground or maybe like I did when I was a kid, you're at school and you observe that someone is being hurt treated unfairly, or treated as less deserving and with less love and attention than others. Observers notice something, and they think that it might be important, but they don't do anything about it. If you observe something you know isn't right and don't take any action, you are a bystander. Bystanders stand by, maybe waiting for someone else to step in, or like the disciples, just staring at the sky with their mouths open, waiting for Jesus to come back. But we don't know when or how Jesus will come back. That's on God's schedule. What we do know is that the Holy Spirit is with us now. And we know all that Jesus taught us about how to live. It's all right there in the Bible. His last words to the disciples and to us were to be a witness. A witness is not an observer or a bystander. A witness is an upstander. Someone who, once they see clearly what is wrong or right in the world, they stand up, they step forward, They take action, and they do their part to create the kingdom of God here and now. What have you seen that you can't unsee? What is God asking you to be a witness to? How can you be an upstander? Let's stop staring up at an empty sky like the disciples first did, and instead turn our heads towards the earth. Let us point our attention, time, and energy towards all that is happening on the ground around us. 
And when we look down, afraid that there are no footprints to follow, I imagine the disciples felt like that once Jesus was gone. Let's remember that the Holy Spirit is all around, pushing us and prodding us forward onto the path of Jesus. All right, say bye. 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 Can't see you, sis.